Hello everyone, this is Philip. the latest update from the Community Hub here in Pahoa. Um, I have some information from Yukaika to pass on to you guys, as well as an update on the maps and a flow near Kuokala Charter School and the Warm Ponds. So thank you for joining me today. Let's see how my connection's doing here. All right, am I coming through for you guys? Good afternoon, everyone. This is Philip at the Community Hub. My latest update today on behalf of Ikaika and the rest of the crew who are not here with me today. So how's it going, everybody? So it's pretty rainy down here in Pahoa. Um, not raining at the moment. We'll see, make sure you know, if the noise gets too much, let me know. I know I got some background noise around here, but uh, I forgot my iPad today. I gotta go with a laptop and I gotta plug it in next to the noisy generator, so please forgive that. Let me know if it's too noisy or if it starts raining too hard and you guys can't hear me. But for now, it's like it's all good, so we'll get going. So yeah, I welcome everyone. Um, here at the Hub, everyone just finished eating a nice hot lunch. Um, Vacuees came down, braved out the rain. Um, so the scene at where the hub's still operating, it's still still open today. You know, uh, there were some reports of maybe some bad air in the area, but uh, there was I drove through some vlog getting down here, maybe in the area HPP, but uh, for now the area down here is actually not that bad. Um, definitely, there's a rainstorm happening associated with the big plumes of gas rising from the ocean entry and from Fisher Eight. Um, so there's definitely some interesting weather down here. You know, I've heard some reports, I haven't confirmed, but something like over 20 inches of rain in the last week. So uh, it's really making its own weather, which is fascinating. I don't know much about it apart from that. You know, you gotta imagine that all this hot, warm steam mixed with all the stuff is rising in, 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 you know, into the colder above, and that's kind of what's driving everything. I can't tell you any details beyond that. But there is a lot, a lot of steam rising up and a lot of weather all around Pahoa just because of that. So. So, all right, guys, um, let me show you guys um, probably, well, let's see how we're going to start here. Let me uh, show you guys a photograph that was posted by Bruce Amori in the morning. And this photograph is uh, posted on Facebook, um, posted by Extreme Exposure Fine Arts, right? So this is from 6 p.m. on Sunday the 8th, yesterday, last night. And what you can see is this is the new flow that's going to come close to the worm ponds. This is the edge of it right here, and it goes like that under that gas cloud up through there. Here is Highway 137, and right in here is the school and the warm pond. So that's uh, that's how close it is. Um, USGS reports today finally gave us a number. They're saying 500 meters is uh, actually um, how far it is. You know, so our initial reports from Bruce Amori and. Um, the boat captains was, they were guessing something like uh, 300 yards, but it may actually be more like 500 meters. So that might be five, 550 yards, something like that. You know, it's an estimate. So it's more or less in that, in that range. Um, obviously we did the best we can with our initial estimates. So um, we're happy to have a better number with that. So that's awesome. Um, the flow, it seems to be mostly pouring in at this main entry point over here. Where it's going in the water, and if we are, you know, we're, we're kind of still hoping against hope that the flow will all keep pouring in that direction and not creep over this direction any, anymore. But it has been kind of creeping, according to reports. I have no idea how fast or how slow, but until I know otherwise, I'm assuming it's staying basically more or less in the same spot over here until we see any change with that. All right, so for now, so far, so good. You know, maybe we have a little extra space there between the school and the flow front, you know, but one thing you can see already is this big gas cloud, the lace cloud, is going right directly over the school right now. You know, I'm not, not this, more this one's going right over the school right now. So definitely um, they're gonna start to have some effects from the gas. Um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll keep hoping for the best, hoping and praying for the best down at the school over there. So, um, yeah, as far as a, uh, uh, other photographs that Bruce has posted. Let's see what else he's got to offer us. Here's a view of the flow front itself. So you can kind of see in the area right in here is the main entry that's been persistent for many weeks already. This is kind of in the middle. The new entry is way down over here on the left, right? Way down over here on the left. With the, new, uh, the recent weeks, weeks old entry kind of over here. So it's still pumping in the middle, you know? Um, that's kind of a, 
been persistent. You know, I thought I might have been dying off, but I was wrong about that. So actually it's still moving through there with, with a good amount of volume. It's just kind of spread out a long ways, right? But, you know, here's the big entry to the south. Um, let's see what else we can glean from his other photographs. His picture of the Fisher 8 and the Lava River coming down. You can see it's uh, still fairly open in some areas, but crusted over in others. So we'll, we'll uh, just move on from that one. Another fantastic photograph, but I'm not sure we, we can learn scientifically from that. I'm gonna keep going. All right, here's one that we haven't seen this perspective before. So that main ocean entry I was showing you guys was kind of over here. There had been a big, big finger, like a big flow that was putting the ocean right over here. And it's kind of dying off by this photograph. I'll show you guys in the thermal image as well. That one seems to be a little bit cooler than it was before. But in fact, the north edge, you know, here's kind of the north edge. You see there is lava still leaking out here, but that's not nearly as much. So that's interesting, you know. Um, we had looked at, at the photographs yesterday from Scott and said that there was probably some crusting over of this channel. Um, we'll see that this, it actually reopened and maybe it's crossing over and reopening once again. So this thing is still active in fact. It's just kind of hiding from us. You know, it might be the pulses of pressure pulses or some other process that's actually causing it to cross and then break open. But in any case, this northern part is still active through here, but doesn't seem to be quite as vigorous as, as it was uh, the day before that. Um, here's a reverse angle view. Here's uh, once again the school and warm pond area down here at the coast. And here's a new flow as it's come, right? So this slope over here is the one that's kind of creeping over, whereas most of the flow is actually coming, pouring in into the ocean over there. So that's what we're hoping, but there is still some movement over here. I can't tell you guys how much. We just hope it stays more or less where it is, right? And most of the volume somehow gets channelized going into that, that area in the south. So I think um, that's probably the best of what we know about Brutus photos. Here's another angle of that same same, uh, same area. I believe it's the same area, yeah. And now this is actually the northern edge of the flow once again. This was 6 p.m. yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, no, by, by this point, this is actually 5 a.m. yesterday. So this information is kind of old from this, in this section, so let's move on from there. Um, as far as other photographs, uh, there's, there's a few by USGS. We can look at some of these first. Um, this is actually a photograph from yesterday, July 8th, and I pointed this out first because we actually can see the level on a channel, at least downriver, it seems to be still fairly high right here. But the photograph released just today shows a similar view. And there's like cops of trees. And now we actually can see the exposed bank, right? Not just like one level, but a couple of levels, a couple of these, of these ridges on the side are showing the, the actual bank level, right? And then through here in this area where it's kind of ponding, it seems to actually be uh, crusting over. Um, right, so it seems like for sure uh, the level has dropped again. You know, we keep, hear reports from people who are who have been um, on the ground saying the flow still looks high. So I think you know it's dropped a little bit, but maybe not that much as far as people can tell. You know, it's hard to tell the size of these things from the ground, especially. But you know, here's some clear geologic evidence this thing is actually dropping. Right, similar to what we saw before, after the breakout uh, just, just downstream from here around Capitol Crater. Um, where the original channel drained out. So that's probably the most interesting one from today. Um, let me see what else we got um, as far as photographs. This was from yesterday actually, so let me, let me jump, jump over here to our thermal map. All right, so this thermal map was uh, released uh, just from yesterday morning. So let me show you guys the date. I don't want to change my zoom level, but there it is. Uh, 8th July, 6 a.m. was the day that this actually was Positive. And here is our kind of a zoom in of our area. Um, oh, okay, so this is the previous one, yeah. So here's yesterday's, or you know, actually two days ago, July 6th. Right, so you can see we have our big channel over here. There's some spillovers happening over here. Here's where we reorgan reorganized our bend. And you can see that the channel is basically crossing over in this direction, although it's seeping to the north, big open channel in the north. Reminding you guys, this is the, this is the not the most recent one, but we'll get to that shortly. Here's our big persistent spot going in the ocean as it was a few days ago. Lots of these small breakouts going in the ocean, all through here, all the way down. But, uh, and here's our southern branch that was kind of creeping off over here. What I'll show you guys is it looks like part of this big slab right in here broke off and now the channel is diverting this way. So let me click the image and switch it over for you guys to see. So there it is, you see that that crust is no longer there. 
it's been pushed down, maybe out of the way. There's actually quite a lot of debris in this imagery right in here. So there could be chunks of that that are kind of burst, burst through. And you can see the, amount, the actual main channel, I'll zoom out a little bit, you can see it's clearly pointing down this direction now. So looking to the north branch, you see it's actually still active right in here, still open in fact. But this lower section is crusted over and lava is still going over this section over here is a hot area still going in the ocean. So it's still active, it seems to be crusting over, maybe breaking open, so it's hard to say anything about the volume right there. Maybe it's just, just slightly slow enough that it can crust over, but the amount going through may not be any less, it's hard to tell. But it's actually good news that there's lava going still over here and lava still going over here, because it means there's not as much going down here in theory, right? And you know, we all want less lava going towards the warm ponds. Um, just kind of point out, let me, let me see what we got. I can scroll this down a little bit here. There is some kind of artifact in the data right through here where it some discontinuity just in the actual data itself. So it's hard to see what's happening right in this boundary right in here. But it almost looks like, you know, the first flow that came through um, is a little cooler than the stuff that's up here. It's hard to tell. Maybe this might have been earlier or maybe it was later. It's hard, you know, I can't, you know, it's hard to really say anything conclusive. Um, but what we can say, see is that this flow has come all the way down to the ocean right there. There's the Warm Pond School area, surf spot area right in there. Um, the image is a little fuzzy just in itself. I think the camera can't quite focus, but... But right there, that's the edge of the flow as it's come down, and there's this little bit right there. So it may have been that that initial burst actually came through in the edge of the ocean, and then there's a second wave coming above it. It's hard to tell if that's true or not because of this artifact that's going on right in here. In any case, it looks like the lava has found a path and established a path, and we can just hope that that stays the main channel, kind of going down that direction, right? You know, my concern is still that it's just so close that this thing flops over or spills over or some reason starts creeping over this way, as we've seen this entire delta, you know, form over the last month or so, right? The lava's flopped all everywhere through here, right? So that we now have essentially a two mile width along the ocean where lava has been active going in um, up to now. So that's our thermal, which is telling us a lot. You know, it seems like, you know, there's still some pathway for sure down through here, right? But that's still crusted over. The pathway that was going down through here is cracked open. So we now have an open channel all the way through here with some debris that maybe was the remains of some of those obstructions out of the way, right? There was also some, some crust down in that area right there. Let me, let me go back for you guys so you can kind of compare again, right? Had it before after right there's a little bit of zoom issue i can't get it quite much of the zoom but so it's a little bit bigger in this version but uh you can kind of see there that before and look the channel is clearly pointing to the southeast right there and when we go to the one over here that southeast branch is kind of crusting over it's probably still flowing underneath there to get to this ocean entry over here but at least on the surface the main channel is over here on this side now right so that's that's uh, what we've been reporting for a couple of days now um so that's good to have confirmation of that. Um, as far as what's happening at the summit, there was an earthquake at 9.20 this morning, I believe. There was a signal right there. I want to say they called it a 5.3, 5.4, I'm not sure. They're pretty close to consistent now. Um, one of our viewers pointed out to us, and I'm sorry I can't think of your name right now, but uh, pointed out that we've had a interesting pattern of, uh, of, you know, we have actually like a small earthquake that causes a drop in the tilt meter that seems to proceed by many hours. Um, hi kids, how's it going? Oh, some kids are having fun here at the hub. All right. Um, so right here we seem to have, have a little event that precedes the main spike by a few hours, right? Maybe in this case it might have been eight hours, maybe yeah, it's, it's hard to really, really tell from there. And if we go back, look at the week you see we have one there there's one there there's one there there's one there this doesn't really mean anything to me you know um, it's interesting it's kind of fascinating but um, this one I don't really see one as well that one you see like a little bit but if you go back in the data before that it's really too noisy to see that right so one of the benefits of the USGS having cleaned up this instrument even though it changed our pattern right we actually can see the detail in here now and to see that there actually is something happening some kind of a uh, not a midpoint event, but there's something that precedes this big earthquake, right? Some, something that tells you that it's still continuing in that pattern at least. So that's, that's interesting to see. And looking at our vertical, vertical uh, component of our GPS, 
we see we're still dropping, the line is consistent, you know, we might have some variations where it flattens a little bit, but it's basically still pointing down. There's no change there that's significant. And for horizontal, we're still in that same pattern if it looks like, you know, we, we're really at some limit as far as how much it can spread sideways anymore, right? I mean, notice it's still dropping, right? The line is still pointing downhill, so it actually is still dropping. It's just not dropping nearly as fast as it was in these earlier two months, right? So that's, that's the interesting part about that. All right, and um, let's see. All right, so I showed you guys showed you guys that image already. So, um, so yeah, guys, that's basically the update with the map. You know, um, the summit's kind of following a similar pattern. You know, someone, one of our viewers, reported there is um, some ash fall at uh, the summit. Um, that's interesting. You know, most of the eruptions um, haven't actually put out a whole lot of ash. There've been a lot of steam um, and some gas. Um, not as much gas, but. Uh, Definitely, some gas is still coming out. We're looking into that, into those reports of of uh, how about you know how the steam is actually actually uh, being released during those earthquakes, perhaps. So um, that's interesting as well. So okay, there. Ikeka did post about a possible breach. Um, I asked him actually we should call it an overflow. It's not exactly a breach. It's an overflow of the walls back there. Um, so. We've been monitoring the police scanners. From what we can tell, it's uh, fairly small. Um, hasn't really traveled very far. And maybe that's a good chance for me to kind of go back over the thermal map and we can look a little bit farther up the river, right? So um, we've been examining this um, distal section area right next to the ocean over here. But one thing to kind of point out is you can see this area right here, right up upstream of our blockage, right? So it's interesting. Essentially right, right here, that's our block our block and all the lava stuck all around it that's stopping the flow from going straight directly that way. The lava is still managing to squeeze around it and come and reestablish the channel right over here below the falls, right? That's where we have the falls, the diversion going above and then pouring over that edge into the old channel. It's pouring over the old channel wall, right? So that's fascinating. It might be that, that there's extra ponding here is like a bottleneck right here so not all the lava is able to get through here as fast as it wants to so it's kind of spilling over especially in this area right in here right and then meanwhile the, uh, the photograph released by USGS today um, shows areas actually let me look at the look at this thermal so let's see here is the edge of Green Mountain right in here so probably right in here are those trees in the photograph so they were showing maybe an area right in here perhaps that was showing um, channel walls that by today are actually dropped down um, maybe a couple meters. A couple meters, possibly more. It's hard to tell. You know, maybe four, you know, maybe even more than that because it's hard to tell the size of those channel walls. But before that was reported, when this was taken at 6 a.m. yesterday morning, you can see there are clearly several spillovers happening in this down down area right through here, right the area that's now kind of drained out. So it's interesting. It's almost like there's a, like there's a pulse that kind of came through here, spilled over, and now it's kind of drained away by now. Right, so that's fascinating. That kind of that kind of jives with what we've been hearing as far as the volume of lava coming out of the fissure, right? We hear one person tell us it's high, the next person tells us it's low, the next person tells us it's high. We look and we see some spillovers in some areas. Um, one thing to note is, you know, through here there are really not that many spillovers, right? No spillovers anywhere above that section in this thermal image. So you know, you really could see it as a pulse captured in this image that's basically captured while it's going down around that bend. But given a photograph today, we know that that's not there anymore, that that area is drained more. Um, up in here, we can see there's one tiny spillover right over there. Um, and if we look closely, we might see there's a tiny one right there, and there's a tiny one right there, and a tiny one right there. And look, there's right here at the Y. This was yesterday, remember, there's a tiny one right there, right? So as far as I know, this hasn't advanced past the flow field. I do know that, that the county officials are in there checking out this overflow. I think they check out every single one of them. So um, um, they're on it. And, um, and yeah, we'll let you know if anything happens as far as uh, uh, that, that uh, overflow at the Y. We got people uh, manning the scanners, so we'll, we'll let you know what we know as soon as we hear anything. So yeah, that's the, the, the thermal update. Um, let's see what else. Um, what else there is to show you guys. So if you guys are just joining us.
we're talking about overflows up here in this upper area, uh, of which there are not many during this thermal. Um, the level is, seems to have dropped down again by today according to, well, it dropped down according to earlier reports today. And the fact that we now, you know, if there actually is an overflow up here in this area, then that means levels are back up again. So it's really kind of surging. It's high and low and high and low and high and low. So one thing that's been interesting to me is, you know, I'm kind of wondering, you know, um, are we seeing quicker fluctuations of the, of the volume coming out of Fisher 8? You know, it's possible. Um, it's hard to say because, uh, I mean, the people who are there, the people who I've talked to who have seen the most video about this, you know, and it's true I haven't talked to all the USGS guys, or, you know, only one guy, in fact, um, have said that the fluctuation is actually fairly common. You know, even while they stay there for hours, they see some fluctuation. So the fluctuation is, is a question of how big and how fast, right? And so looking into that some more, but, you know, um, we're not really sure what's going on there, you know, um, but I am still withholding judgment to see um, if any of these changes kind of persists, right? You know, I kind of always imagine and I kind of keep saying that the changes we see to this eruption are likely to be changes we see in slow motion, right? Because volcano changes fairly slowly as far as its plumbing system compared to what we're used to, to perceiving. So it may well be that it is changing and we're just kind of seeing it fluctuate in between that changing process, right? So we'll, we'll have to wait and see how what's going on exactly there. Um, as usual, kind of present all the different um, nuggets of information that we have coming in and let you guys make some of your own decisions, you know, kind of informed with you know, uh, the information that I can kind of add, observations I can point out to you guys, essentially. So, so yeah, um, there is, okay, Fisher 22, yeah, so we have some reports on Fisher 22. Um, apparently it is still spattering. Um, it's spattering um, not consistently. It seems to kind of go um, every maybe 30 seconds from what I hear, every 30 seconds it'll go off, like, you know, boom, and a couple of seconds later, boom, a couple of seconds later, boom, and then it'll stop for maybe 30 seconds, and it kind of goes on again. Um, there was an interesting thing suggested by uh, an, in an article uh, by one of the SGS guys um, interviewed, um, saying that it may be that that's where the, ga that the gas is able to kind of bubble out of there easily, right? So it's, it's kind of building pressure before it can, can vent out through there, but it's, it's actually the same feeder source to Fisher 22 as it is to... Um, uh, Fisher number eight, right? Um, so, in fact, um, um, it is still active. Um, there's no lava flow that I know of right now moving from there. If there is, it's got to it's got to be fairly small. I don't think it's been um, noticed by everyone. Although the spattering has been reported still continuously, and um, I'll, I'll show you guys maybe in a little while. But uh, I expect that to continue because 22 is going to be the open spot. 22 and eight are, are essentially the maybe two of the easiest spots for the lava to get out of these fissure systems, right? So let me, actually, let me, let me uh, line that up for you guys so that I can use as far as showing you guys the history of that particular area. Um, all right, just a second here. Turn the camera around. Um, someone said something about evacuations. I haven't heard of any new evacuations. It doesn't mean that they're not happening. I haven't heard of any anything different, we'll let you know, we'll have to probably post something different as far as that, I haven't heard anything about that. But, okay, so what I, what, I, what I want to do now is actually zoom out from here a little bit. Okay, and I might have some, some noise in my imagery here, but I want to show you guys something as far as these fissures go. Let me go back to, back to, where is it? right there. That's the frame I need right there. All right. So, okay. Um, let me zoom in again. Thanks for bearing with me, you guys. It's something I'm going to show you here that I think is, is interesting. So, if you guys look at the line of these original fissures, okay, this image uh, is from May 14th. It's pretty early on. So, all this ground has been covered by lava since then, right? But I actually got to go back to this frame to show you guys something. If you look at the line of fissures that exists, you see that from 11, 12, 10, 9, 8, 2, 7, 4, 3, 14, all these line up pretty well. And then right there between 4 and 1, right, it takes a step over to the side slightly. And then it continues again, 1, 5, 13, 6, 15, 19. 
uh, over here it's 20 and 16 and 18 and 17. 17 is off to the side, we can ignore it. It's also a step over to the side, right? But uh, actually, same direction is interesting, right? So there's actually the segment of 17 is totally separate, but we have essentially one fairly continuous trend between 1 and 18, then a slight step over, and then a continuous trend from 4 to 11, right? All right, now look at 4 to 11 and the distance between there. The middle of 4 and 11 is right in here. That's where 8 is, okay? And look at the side of this one. The middle of 18 and 1 is right in here, and that's essentially where 22 is. It's not on this map yet because it's gotta, gotta be created still. There it is, there's 22 right there in the middle, right? And the reason I had to show you that particular map is here by the, uh, whatever date this is, uh, maybe it's 15th or 16th, you see that that gap, oh, where'd it go? That gap between these two lines also erupts and kind of connects them right there. So from that point on, you don't really see that detail anymore, right? But that's interesting to me, you know? So it seems like if the crack broke up in two sections, then one section is the one in the middle of it, it's dominated by eight, and the other one is by 22. So that's why I think we'll actually see eight and 22 still open the longest, you know? Um, I don't think it's any big deal, you know, as far as 22 being active, that uh, anything is shifting back and forth. I think it's just the easiest, op most open spot of those two areas, right? So that's basically what I wanna show you guys as far as that that goes. And for you guys just joining us now, we can recap our beginning of our broadcast, which was kind of involved uh, the imagery here, um, down here at Kapoho, right? So here's a thermal image taken at six o'clock yesterday morning. So that would be 20, no, 30 hours ago, more or less, something like that. And you can see the channel is now open and established all the way down to here. The Halanui spot secrets, Kuakala, are still safe. USGS is now reporting it to be 500 meters away, um, less than 600 yards from there to the edge of the flow. So that's a little more than we were saying yesterday because our estimates yesterday were from people on the boat and from the helicopter, like Rusamori, who made their best guess possible. So now we have hopefully some actual um, better map data showing it's actually about 500 meters, 550 yards or so from a Halanui Park. And Kuukala is slightly closer right here, but still that's the distance recorded is about 500 meters between the edge of that flow and here. So we're still hoping that most of the flow actually gets channeled in an open direction over here. You can see it clearly the channel is being established in this direction and kind of to recap, there is a little data artifact, like this continuity right in there. Let me zoom it in. Uh, nope, that's not it right here. So you can see there's a line, you know, where they basically probably from two different scans are kind of coming together. So it doesn't quite match up and you can't tw tell quite as much from there, you know, um, so that's not something with the eruption. It's actually something with the data, um, but you can see that the channel is actually open all the way down through here. Let's see if I can get my view back to kind of how it was before and show you guys some of that difference to the map the day before. Oh, nope, I'm a little off. So let me put it back over here. Show you guys more or less. So this is how it is yesterday morning and then two days before that, right? So two days before that, we had the channel bending to the southeast and we had this big slab kind of covering the connection between this seep and the channel right through here. So if you watch that section in particular, you'll see it's now cleared out. It's open to the south. There's a good amount of rubble right in here. It could be that these are some of these pieces, a slab right in there, right? The old channel, you just kind of go off over here to this direction. It's likely still flowing down underneath there and going all the way to feed this main ocean entry over here on the, over here at the east. And as far as the ocean entries, this one is still very much active. So it seems like it's got a pretty good feeder right there. You can see the northern channel is actually still open in this upper section, crusted over in this lower section, right? Let's compare this to the image from the day, a couple days before. Right, so a couple days before it was open all the way to the ocean, right? And you can see it's actually crested over the downhill area. Now, that means the flow is probably still going under there and it's just crested over on top, so it might be slightly slower. Um, as far as ocean entry, there seems to be hot lava right there, right? So, uh, but it seems to be um, a lot less than it was before, 
right? Another thing to notice is a couple days ago, we had a big spot going in the ocean from this middle zone right in here. That seems to have cooled off. It's reorganized itself in a slightly different shape now as it is there in the ocean, but still a lot of lava going in. So definitely reorganizing itself in that area right over there. So um, that's what we have for the thermal image. Um, I also showed some images from Bruce Amori. Let's go, whoop, let me go the wrong direction. Okay, let's go back a little more. Here's one showing the edge of that flow or it crosses 137. Another lobe going close to 137 right in there. And here is where it's the edge of the flow going in the ocean. Oh, sorry, it's out of focus, there you go. And that would be the area of infrastructure right in there. All right, so um, there's the ocean entries. This northern entry, you can kind of see this river of lava from the north, and here it is over here, right? Crusted over in this lower section. And there's a little bit of lava kind of coming out mostly over here, but it doesn't seem to be a whole lot, right? So we're interesting, interested to see what's happening with the northern entry. Is it kind of pulsing, starting and stopping? And this photograph happened to be taken during a slow time. Um, we're not quite sure about that. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Our main entry point is down over here, over here on the side, right? And, oh, nice RC photos by Bruce. And here's our main entry point once again. And down the south, our southern entry point over the school would be around the bend from there. All right, so let's see what else we got here. The image he started off with showing a view from above, right? So here we see there is a main entry from this new channel. There is the edge of the flow front right here. It goes through here and up. There is 137. And then there's this the warm pond. The school is underneath that patch of fume right there, so unfortunately there's lays blowing right across the area right now. Mostly north, but a little bit to the south right through here. Right, so, so there it is. Um, that's the, uh, the photographic evidence we have from today. Um, the US just did also release some photographs of their own, so let me show you guys um, some of those wherever they are. More images of the summit. Um, it's been super rainy down here, I've been mentioning you guys. Here's a picture of Fisher 8 in there, believe it or not, in the middle of all that, with that rain cloud all around it. And down over here is another view of Fisher 8. And actually, the Lava River goes down in that direction over there, believe it or not, right? And so here's Leilani, and look at how much hot ground is still present uphill there, right? So even though it's not actually flowing, the lava is still going underneath all there. And you see how hot the ground is still staying in that area. So that's fascinating as well. We talked about this image. Oh, that's not it. Forward. This image right here was taken right around the bend on, on a, the north side of Capulco Crater, Green Mountain. Um, and you can see in this photograph, we see the level of lava seems to be down a little bit while this photograph was taken right in here. You can clearly see the banks exposed there and there and there. And in fact, the thermal imagery that we sh that we saw showed these overflows are actually just from um, yesterday morning or sometime near yesterday morning. So it was that high yesterday morning and it's dropped down to here by the time this photograph was taken this morning. And so we see this, some clear fluctuations down through here, some great pulse, pulses, right? So let me go give you one more in a sequence. This is a photograph from the day before showing there's that same group of trees. And here is that level, it's hard to see, it's not quite as close, you know, how much of the bank is exposed over there, but it doesn't look quite as much. Um, in any case, you know, it seems like the lava levels have been down a lot in some areas, then up a lot in other areas, and it's kind of hard to keep track of what's going on. And it may be that we have these surges moving through, moving down a channel system. And we're not quite sure, we'll, you know, report the best that we know. And as always, if anyone has better information from us, please let us know. You know, we're just kind of compiling everything that everyone says. Right. There is a lava falls as it goes down. Yeah, and that's our that's what I got to report for you guys today. Um, there have been, you know, um, I, I had talked a little bit about some ground movement around Fisher Eight. We're not sure exactly, you know, how much ground is moving around there, and you know, we're not sure if, if anything that's happening is alarming at all. You know, it might just be the regular shifting of what's going on at the ground. 
I've also um, kind of gone back and looked at some of the old imagery and know that there are some old cracks in the area that may have gotten filled in with lava flows themselves. So just the fact that we see cracks in the ground maybe is not enough to tell us that those cracks precede or anytime recent, you know, we have to look at, go back and see what date those cracks actually opened up to make, make them meaningful or not. So we'll, we'll, we'll still keep researching that for you guys. But as far as we know, Fisher 8 is still stable. Um, lava is still coming out of there at a huge rate. The rate may be less than before. Um, one important thing that's kind of independent of the channel heights is the fountain heights, right? So the fountain heights are reported to be down as well. So that would help, you know, be a, a great piece of evidence towards the actual flow coming out of the uh, coming out of the cone, coming out of the system being less, right? So, but it's less than high and more, you know. So I'm, you know, I'm not sure that. We have a plot, or if we have one, I haven't seen it or been made privy to it, of you know how the fountain heights are varying, spending more time low than high now, that kind of thing. But um, for sure, it's still fountaining. It's rarely getting over the top of that 180 foot cone. So, but that's been consistent for the last couple, couple days, maybe almost a week already, right? At least. So, um, this rate seems to be, as far as we know, um, still all right. There is a report of a crack. There's a crack visible on the side of the, side of the cone. Um, but that in itself is, you know, it's just another feature. We can't jump to any conclusions from that. Um, today, because of all the rain, um, everything is steaming, including that crack, so we gotta be careful for that. So the posting is probably still happening. You know, all the cracks are steaming, the cracks are all around the whole area, you know, even up rift there. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's Fisher 8. Um, I wanted to mention also, you know, um, Pool itself had plenty of cracks that were steaming on the side of the crater for a long time, and they never opened up to do anything different than that, right? So it's part, part of the process as a thing builds a certain height and kind of adjusts the low as a lava um, kind of erodes the base of the cinder cone on the inside around a vent, you know, that, that it could actually shift a little bit. So um, obviously, you know, um, if, you know, if there was a huge, huge crack, you know, we'd actually um, would want to investigate that further. But as far as I can tell, I haven't seen any photographs of this thing yet. So I'm not willing to jump to any conclusions. Um, as far as I know, there's just kind of, you know, um, business as usual at Fisher 8. Um, so once again, you know, we're not sure. We're not sure about, about, uh, the volume of lava really coming out, you know, I think that's a hard thing to measure, right? You know, we've made a lot of assumptions about the channel depth. It's hard to tell, you know, what will, what we actually can, can see about the volume depending on the cross section of the river. We have seen in several spots the level go down to expose the banks, and to me that's the most telling thing, you know, it's showing this level is down. And then when the level is up again, that's when we see overflows along the banks, so the fact that we see overflows and then banks exposed and overflows and banks exposed, that to me is what's kind of dictating this posting pattern that, that seems to be what's being reported to people, by people around, so. Um, yeah, once again, guys, um, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, we'll wrap it up here from the hub. And as soon as something else is new, we'll let you guys know. I don't think there's gonna be much, but we'll see. We'll see about the, the aerial flights happening this afternoon, this evening. Um, Okay, evacuation notice for Cinder Town. Let me let me look into that just a little bit because I am not sure about that. So, um, okay, let me see. Um, okay, so there is a report from the scanner that lava has overflowed channel, moved into the area, presumably the Cinderland area, and they are considering going house to house to evacuate people, to get people ready to evacuate. So that is the notice of Cinderland evacuation. Um, so I'm relying on you guys that are reading the scanners and sharing the information. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that breach is down there. Um, the thermal image we have is from yesterday morning, so, you know, anything we were to look at over there would kind of be speculation. We can, we can kind of look 
a little bit, but let me turn the camera back around here, you guys. So this was yesterday. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really sure which area they're referring to, right? I know Cinder, Cinder Pit's over here. Cinderland must be farther over over here, so we'll have to see, you know. You know, you guys, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to speculate on exactly where this might actually be because I have no idea. I'll uh, look into it some more, and if I can find more info as far as where that's happening, um, then I'll report back to you guys with another update. Seeing as I don't know and I don't, don't want to say what's, what's going on, so um, stay tuned, you guys, to the... the Speed updates. I'm sure that uh, I believe uh, Hawaii Tracker is uh, getting ready to post something about those about those evacuations. Um, oh, we have some information coming from our from our viewers. There was a brush fire and smoke this morning by Cinder Road, according to our comments. Thank you, Myrene. And that's all we know right now as far as that goes. But to recap, you know, um, what we started off with, what everyone is probably concerned about, those joining in late. We have a thermal image of the flow all the way to the coast. It's going in the ocean right there. The beach park, warm pond, school, and surf spot are all over here. According to USGS, that's now 500 meters away at the report. So um, that's what we got going on right there. Um, there's one image that's not quite not, it's not quite clear of the ocean entry where it was taken. Um, let me show you guys this one right here. So there's a lot of fumes, so it's hard to make out what's actually going on. But I believe this is the ocean edge right here. Right, the ocean edge right here. This looks like the waves and the steam of the hot blocks and lava being blown inland, right, right there. And the river of lava that's pouring in this way and kind of going along the ocean over there. So. It's hard to say if this is somewhere in the middle part of the entry or the southern part of the entry. It looks a little bit like the, like this might have been the initial southern part and the big river the southern part is actually bending around towards the north, which is what we want it to happen. So we'll see right there. Right, so I'm not quite sure where that photograph is taken of the ocean entry, but at least in one spot you have a lot of lava heading into it right there. So that's it, you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Um, let us know if um, you can help us uh, do a better job. Let us know if there's some more information that we're missing. Um, and as always, stay classy, Buna. I will help.